Broadcasting live on Spreaker.com, this is What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe, the man whose March Madness bracket was absolutely destroyed by the end of week two. So to paraphrase Dragon Ball Z's Frieza, this wasn't even my final four. Nothing. I, all right, I'm not going to apologize for sorry it. Sorry about that. Anyway, one. now here's your host of the VLC Studios <laughs> in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Baxter Colburn. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. I'm sorry I don't understand your reference, but I'm sure the Dragon Ball Z listeners are like, "Oh, yeah, how funny!" All two of them. Thank you for thank you, mom and dad, or whoever you are out there listening. <laughs> Anyway, we want to take a quick minute, though, to thank uh, Crossway Church that had us a couple weeks ago for their March Madness event. Thank you, everybody there, for that exciting event and those that helped out with it as well. We're looking forward to hitting the road again very soon. Before we welcome in our first contestant, we'd like to encourage all of you to go check out our social media pages. On Facebook, you can find us at What's the Score, and on Twitter and Instagram at at WTS Sports Quiz. If you'd like to play our games on air, you can email us at WTSSportsQuiz at gmail.com or visit our social media pages and click on the pin post at the top of each page. We also officially have launched our website. You can go and check it out by going to wtssportsquiz.wix.com backslash quiz. That's wtssportsquiz.wix.com slash quiz. You can find all the latest information on upcoming shows, who tops our panelist leaderboard, which happens to be one of our panelists today, and past shows, and so much more. If you ever miss a show, you can find it on Spreaker.com and the Spreaker app, iTunes, the College Tailgate, the Sports Quotient, and on Stitcher. Just type what's the score in the search bar and click on the latest episode. Also, if you think this show is worth at least a dollar, why not donate to our Patreon account? Just search what's the score and donate today. Let's meet our panelists this week. First up, he is a sports broadcaster and journalist product from the University of Whitewater and the biggest UW-Whitewater fan to our knowledge. It's Daniel Shetler. Welcome to the show, Daniel. Next up, from the Big 920, WOKY in Milwaukee, and the public address announcer for Marquette University and the Lakeshore Chinooks. Tickets go on sale soon. It is Dan Pfeiffer. No, I have not yet created the Dan Pfeiffer action figure. We'll <laughs> I see was what hoping we can get. you would reference oh, well. it. And finally, he is a member of the Illinois Soccer Hall of Fame and the founding general manager of the Chicago Fire and now the CEO of Chicago NASL. It's Mr. Soccer himself, Peter Welch. Great to be here. Thank you, Baxter. You are very welcome. Well, panel, we are so excited to have you here. Two new faces this week as well in Daniel and Peter. And I must say an exceptional thank you, and it's very honored to be in the same room as you, Mr. Wilt. So as a a lifelong soccer fan, to be in the same room as you, I am very honored. Right back at you. If I may, no one has done more for soccer in the Midwest than the man sitting two seats over from me right now. That is true. Great applause to Peter for everything he's done for soccer in this part of the country. Well, it's time to get this show on the road with our first contestant game. Joining us on the phone to play Quotable Context is Kyle Pavella. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Hey, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for having me on today. You're welcome. Welcome to the show, Kyle. We are excited to have you here. You're going to be playing our first game called Quotable Context, where Game Master Shibe will read you five quotes from this week's news, and you must correctly identify the context of each quote. Answer three out of five questions correctly, and you will win our prize, a What's the Score t-shirt. And if you do get stuck on any question, you are allowed to ask one panelist for help, but only on one question. So make sure you choose wisely. Are you ready to play? Yes, sir. Let's roll. All right. Here is your first quote. He was obsessed. Obsessed with fighting Nate Diaz again. That was Dana White of the UFC telling the media that who is still obsessed over his shocking loss to Nate Diaz. Um, I am going to say Conor McGregor. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> The two will reunite, though, in an epic rematch on UFC 200. There's still no word, though, on if Ronda Rousey will ever get a chance to return to the octagon. We're hoping she will, but they're trying to go after one rematch at a time. Here is your next quote. Coach Kerr shows us film on soccer goals, especially Messi and Barcelona, and how they play. That was Steph Curry talking about what NBA's team's practice of watching European soccer champions Barcelona for inspiration on the court. You know what, I'm going to have to uh, ask a panelist for a hint here. Okay, who would you like to ask? You have Dan, Peter, or Daniel? Um, I'll ask Peter. Peter, that seems like a logical question, the the man with soccer in the the room. Well, you think of Steph Curry talking about it, and you will have a good chance of getting this 
former Marquette nickname of a team correct? Ooh. Does that help you at all, Mr. Pavella? Um. Yeah, so uh, just to rephrase the question, it's asking um, what NBA team has referenced this uh, soccer comparison? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll go with the, um, the Golden State Warriors. Yes, that is correct. Warrior power. Market warrior power. <laughs> Maybe they should have watched some film on the Boston Celtics this week, though. Ooh, yes, the, the, the Golden State Warriors losing their first game at home, and it's been 54 games, I think, something like that, and Greg Popovich and the Spurs are like, ha, they had a nice <laughs> little laugh about that. But as we know, Popovich, that was probably about as much as he celebrated, too. All right, here's your next quote, Kyle. I am sorry I recorded that video. That was what L.A. Lakers player apologizing for recording a video of an intimate conversation between him and Nick Young. That would be uh, point guard D'Angelo Russell. Yes, that is correct. (laughs) D'Angelo Russell, probably breaking the bro code with this, but he recorded a conversation between him and Nick Young, supposedly saying that Nick Young cheated on his fiance Iggy Azalea. Uh, with a 19-year-old at a club. There's still no official word about what's going on, but it's Hollywood, and we have no idea. So we're going to assume they're all guilty and just move on. Here is your next quote. We decided to do this for all the little girls across the country and around the world who deserve to have a voice. That was part of a statement from U.S. women's national team player Alex Morgan as players from the team came out this week demanding what? Um, I believe that is um, their... They're trying to um, implement equal exposure as the men's sport. Equal exposure and something else, just a little bit more about that. The exposure also corresponds with what other part of it? Um, would that be um, would that be along the lines of uh, of higher pay and like more television exposure? Yes. And, uh, yep, that is. Right? Yep, that is correct. Nicely done. It's nice to see the uh, U.S. Women's National Team finally stepping up and uh, demanding higher wages. They certainly deserve it. Uh, last year, the women earned U.S. soccer $20 million, and the men cost them $2 million. So you can I have huge see. issues with that. I must I was tell curious. you, Baxter. I was curious to hear your First opinion, First of all, Peter. the women have a collective bargaining agreement. Mm-hmm. They have true. a union. They've negotiated this. They agreed to it. Stick by it. Mm. Second of all, they have more revenue this year than the mm-hmm. men because, because they the, had a World Cup. Exactly. If you combine the last two years when the men had a World Cup, actually the men generated seven times as much revenue as the women. Ooh. And the women get one-fourth of what the men get. Mm-hmm. So they still get more per dollar raised than the men. And mm. it, I'm not happy so about it might So it just might be a case of still riding the World Cup high and trying to feel like they deserve a little bit more. So I'm curious to see what all transpires with this. All right, Kyle, here is your final quote. Let's see if we can go for perfect this week. Okay. No, it doesn't mean anything. Maybe a cup of coffee. Maybe. That was San Antonio Spurs head coach Greg Popovich telling the media that he really doesn't care about the fact that his team has done what this season? Um, they've uh, gone the entire regular season without losing a home game. That is correct. <laughs> Greg Popovich, the fireball that lights the uh, NBA's flame. He is a man known for so many few words, but his interviews with Greg Sager are probably the best part about what he does. Pop doesn't strike me as the type that likes coffee. I didn't think so. Now he's very too, he's too mellow. Maybe he's had too much, and now he's weaned himself off or something. I don't know. Game Master Shiby, how did Kyle do on our quiz? Kyle got five out of five correct. He's a winner. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you so much for playing, Kyle. We appreciate it. All right. Well, it looks like we're heading to a first break, but when we come back, our panelists will have their first crack at showcasing their knowledge of this week's sports news. And because Peter gave a clue, that means that he gets an extra point. Hey, Ooh. nicely done, Peter. Nicely Team done. Peter. Taking the lead early. Well, you're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, presented by Sports Radio America, live on Spreaker.com.
Hey everyone, this is your host of What's the Score, Baxter Colburn. And I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe. Thank you so much for being here with us today. On our break, we'd like to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Ticket Liquidator. Ticket Liquidator is one of the world's biggest online ticket marketplaces. When you call Ticket Liquidator, you can find sold-out tickets to the biggest events on the planet. They offer a huge selection of tickets at 15% lower cost than their competitors. Their fantastic call center has live agents available seven days a week. Call them today at 855 839 788 Ticket Liquidator is a multiple award-winning company, including Deloitte's Fast 500's fastest-growing company in Connecticut. Call today and find tickets to the next big game. Call 855-839-7889 to have access to over 4 million tickets to over 83,000 events worldwide. That number again is 855-839-7889. Hey guys, this is Baxter Colburn, host of What's the Score, the sports news quiz. Did you know that you can listen to us on a lot of different platforms now? Yes, yes you can. Go and check us out on Spreaker.com. You can download our podcast on Stitcher and on the iTunes App Store. You can also find us on thesportsquotient.com and on sportsradioamerica.com as well. Just about anywhere that you can look for great radio programming, you can find What's the Score, the sports news quiz. Go and check us out today and tell your friends. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe. This week, our panelists are Peter Wiltz, Dan Pfeiffer, and Daniel Schottler. And now, here's your host at the BLC Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Baxter Colburn! Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. Time now for our panelists to showcase their knowledge about this past week's news. Daniel, first question will go to you, sir. The Daily Sports Fantasy Rulers, FanDuel, and DraftKings announced this week that they are dropping what sports from their Daily Fantasy sites? Um, You are allowed for a hint as well if you'd like one. Pfeiffer. You can't ask Pfeiffer for a hint. You can ask, <laughs> no. you can ask Josh or I for right, a hint. Josh. Who? Oh, let's see. It's, um, it's non-professional sports. Oh, there you go. Does that help you? It is a, it's a brand of that, or a genre of, of that. Would Does it be that like help? MMA? No, 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 no. Uh, college sports. College sports. Okay. They, they dropped college sports officially. <laughs> and uh, I'll be honest, as somebody that has tried to do that, I did try to play the whole college football fantasy thing for a while, but there's literally – hundreds and hundreds of Division One college football players, so it's incredibly hard to do. I also tried my hand at cross country. That was also hard to do, and the intramural co-ed beach volleyball was exceptionally difficult, except in Florida, because I have ties there. This is daily fantasy, too. Daily fantasy. Not regular uh, fantasy. Not regular fantasy. Daily yes, fantasy. Yes, yes. All right, uh, Peter, the next question goes for you, sir. Peter, during a recent workout session, USA Olympic weightlifter Matty Rogers accidentally did what? He would not have accidentally worn a bikini. That was a different wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm keeping track of my unusual That was the wrestling. spurn of the great Fifini, too. Yeah. <laughs> I would like a hint from Baxter. Uh, let's just say, and this, this is a her, by the way. Oh. Okay. Uh, so usually, as you you know, you pick things up and you put them down, let's just say it uh, Oh, got, this is a weightlifter? A weightlifter, ah, yes. So she, she was, was a wrestler. Training. No, no, no. Yeah, she was training. She was doing her training session, and she was doing her weights and lifting, and the weights got away from her and did something after they got away from her. Ah, uh, I'm going to go with hmm, roll down a hill and landed in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Close with the rolling aspect of it. Yeah, uh, they, they rolled off the uh, the, like, the holder that she has, and they rolled, and they took out the front glass of the gym that she was working at. Uh, that was in front of the lake. Got it. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So, by, yes, no, unfortunately. But it's it's interesting, though, because... Um, after the fact of it coming out, Rogers uh, took to Twitter because of all of the news that she was getting, and she thought it was very interesting. She said, break records, who cares? Break a window. Newsworthy, the world goes crazy. And she says, what a time to be alive, which is interesting. It has raised more awareness about uh, the fact that she's a world record holder. I actually saw the video of this, mm-hmm. and the look on her face <laughs> as she started to see yes. the weights rolling away. Oh, no. You could tell. Yeah. She knew exactly she what was going to happen. she felt horrible about it, too. She was like, oh, my gosh. And it just like the entire front glass is just completely shattered. 
All right, uh, last question for this round goes to you, Dan. Uh, after losing 2-1 to one on Tuesday night, the U23 U.S. soccer team failed to qualify for the second consecutive time for what major tournament? They failed to qualify for the Olympic tournament. Yes, that is correct. Also, I don't know if we should clap for that as U.S. soccer fans, but yeah, this is the third time in four qualifying cycles the U.S. has failed to qualify for the famed Summer Games. Of course, the men's national team got the big win that kind of kept them alive for the World Cup, but with the U23s losing again, it seems like Jurgen Klinsmann, every time he takes one step forward with the national program, something happens that seems like two steps He's back. He's also the technical director as well, too, so a lot of fingers are being pointed at him for the youth development. As they should. Mm. Well, all, we're heading to a break, but when we come back, our second contestant will play another one of our games. Don't go away. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, live on Spreaker.com. everyone, this is Baxter Colburn, host of What's the Score, the sports news quiz. And I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe. If you enjoy listening to What's the Score, we encourage you to go and listen to us on all the different platforms that we're available on. You can find us on Spreaker.com, Sports Radio America, The Sports Quotient, Stitcher, and on iTunes as well. Go and download our podcast today and let us know your thoughts. A review never hurt anybody. Hey guys, this is Baxter, the host of What's the Score, the sports news quiz. Want to take a minute to remind all of you to go and check us out on social media. You can find us on Facebook at What's the Score, the sports news quiz, on Twitter at WTS Sports Quiz, and on Instagram at WTS Sports Quiz as well. And if you enjoy the whole hashtag game, like some of us hashtag like to do, hashtag goals, hashtag believer, hashtag, I don't know, I'm running out of hashtags. Anyway, use the hashtag what's the score on Twitter and Instagram and check out some of the other exclusive content that we do as well. Connecting all of us one smartphone at a time. Hello all and welcome back to the BLC Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Josh Shabby, your Game Master. We have a dynamite panel this week. Daniel Schottler, Dan Pfeiffer, and Peter Wilt. And they'll have the opportunity to show their prowess in just a little bit. Before that, though, here's the host of What's the Score, Baxter Colburn! Thank you, Josh. Coming up, we put our panelists to the test in our Name 5 Panelist Showdown. If you would like to play our games on air, why not shoot us an email at wtsportsquiz at gmail.com or click on the links to our contestant form on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Playing our next game is Josh Powers from Pennsylvania. Welcome to the show, Josh. Hello, hello. Happy to be here, you guys. All right, Josh, you are going to be playing our game called They're Gonna Put Me in the Movies. As you know, Hollywood has given us a lot of iconic and unforgettable movies about the sports world. Some have given us goosebumps, like Miracle, and others make us cry with emotion and passion for the story being told. Sorry. (laughs) In this game, Josh, we'll read you plots to famous sports movies, and you'll need to tell us which movie we're referencing. Answer at least four questions correctly, and you will win our prize, a What's the Score t-shirt. If you get stuck on a question, you are allowed to ask one panelist for help on only one question, so make sure you choose wisely. Are you ready to play? As I will ever be. Fantastic. Here is your first question. This is the true story of a newly appointed African-American coach and his high school team on their first season as a racially integrated unit. Uh, That would be Remember the Titans. Yes, that is correct. (laughs) Nicely done. Here's your next question. An aging, down-on-his-luck ex-minor leaguer coaches a team of misfits in an ultra-competitive California Little League. Uh, could you repeat the question? Yes. Absolutely. 
An aging, down on his luck, ex minor leaguer coaches a team of misfits in an ultra competitive California Little League. Oh, the bad news there. Yeah, there you go. Nicely done. It was the California thing. I completely forgot where that was set. Yeah, I actually did forget too until I uh, until I saw that. All right, here's your next one. The story of a high school coach and the developmentally challenged man whom he took under his wing. Uh, is it radio? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> it's three for three. Josh is on fire. All right, here's your next one. Cuba Gooding Jr. has a little uh, tendency to do these things, these, these, uh, these sports movies. He does. He's a very, he's, but he's very good at what he does, though, at the same point. I th- honestly thought that was a side note in radio, probably one of the best performances I've ever seen him as an actor do. All right, here's your next question. A self-centered lawyer is sentenced to community service coaching a ragtag youth hockey team. Ha ha, the mighty duck. <laughs> yes. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> were, we, were we supposed <laughs> to go into that? There you go. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right, here is your next one. A coach with a checkered past and a local drunk train a small town high school basketball team to become a top contender for the championship. Hoosiers. Yes, that is correct. Hoosiers. Is that a thing too, right? Isn't it? Do they you <laughs> hickory, hickory, hickory. Oh, Hickory. There I was go. just at Hinkle Fieldhouse a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? Wow. Is Where it still uh, it, nice as the movie shows? Um, They've remodeled it a little bit since then, but it still has the mystique, of Ooh, course. Oh, very nice. All right, here's your next question, Josh. An Iowa, right, corn, an Iowa corn farmer, hearing voices, interprets them as a command to build a baseball diamond in his fields. He does, and the Chicago White Sox come. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Sorry, what? If you build it, he will come. Field of dreams. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> You're right there, Josh? Yeah, okay. yeah great. <laughs> All right, here is, I mean, the, why, why the White Sox? That's, an unfortunate, that's why I said that's unfortunate oh, oh, that the White okay. Sox showed up. Could have been the Marlins. I, <laughs> like, oh, I guess it could have been worse then. All right, here's the next one. The new owner of the Cleveland Indians puts together a purposely horrible team so they'll lose and she can move the team. But the plot is uncovered when they start winning just to spider. I love this English stuff, and I might just move to England. Uh, Major League. Yes, that uh, is Major League. Yeah. Wow. All right, you have a, an interesting opportunity to go for perfect, Josh. Here is your last Cl- uh, question. An exclusive golf course has to deal with a brash new member and a destructive dancing gopher. Oh, you had me there for a second. I, I was going to say Happy Gilmore, but it's Caddyshack. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Game Master Shyby, how did Mr. Powers do? He got eight out of eight. He's got a perfect score. He's a winner. Nicely done, Josh. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, panel, some more questions for you about this week's news. Peter, we'll start with you. A soccer team in Germany posed for a team picture this week but added what to the picture to take a stand for two of their teammates? Oh, my. I will say a rainbow flag. Ooh. Are you sure? (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm not. You have a hint if you'd like it. Go ahead, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, let's just say, uh, aside from that other that movement, there is something else that we hear, all especially about through FIFA, say you no know, blank in soccer. Ah, uh, no racism. Yes. So they what they did then had to do with that. That's awesome. They. Oh, it was. I saw this picture. Yep. It was tinted, so they all looked black. Yes, they all posed with blackface on. Yes. yes. Uh, semi-controversial, semi-not, depending on who you ask, but it was nice to see the entire team stand up after two of their teammates had been racially discriminated against, and they said, hey, if you're going to discriminate against them, you're going to discriminate against the entire team. So good for them taking a stand. All right, Dan. According to a new study, there's a new way to hopefully prevent concussions for NFL players. What is it? Hmm, there have been lots of theories on this. I think to try and narrow it down, I'm going to ask Mr. Baxter for a hint. Let's just say the Miami Dolphins don't have to deal with this very often. The Miami Dolphins. And the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
And the University of Florida, Texas, Dallas Cowboys, oh. Houston Texans. Ah, okay. Because, see, at first I was thinking it's some a theory that's been used for quite a while where they've been saying don't wear helmets. But when you point to teams in the state of Florida, you're saying that they should probably be playing in warmer weather. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> it's interesting. You hear about this and... Uh, I forget who I was telling this to. I might have been Josh or somebody else, but uh, you hear about teams like Green Bay and stuff that, like, well, they're playing in the cold. Well, they probably can't feel it. They've had a concussion. So down in Florida, you probably uh, calms them down a little bit more, and the warmer weather is good for them. All right, last question here going to you, Daniel. So we all know who Steph Curry is, right? I'm assuming you know who Steph Curry is. Well, forget about him. Forget about his success. What we care about, though, is his wife, Aisha, as she is now the center of attention, as she has announced that she will be joining what network as the host of her own show? I get a hint. She'll be on the same network as Bobby Flay. Food Network. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> yeah, I got one right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with this, though, you do have to ask the question, how many recipes are going to have curry involved with them now? You know? Oh. Uh, curry fries, just like the Chris Kindle Mart in Chicago. Oh, curry, there you go. curry, or curry. We've played <laughs> this game before. You do listen to the show. And Yay. to save us from doing that again, we're going to go to another break. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be right back, and our panelists will have another chance to answer some questions about this week's sports news. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, broadcasting on Sports Radio America and Spreaker.com. Hey guys, this is Baxter Colburn, host of What's the Score, the sports news quiz. If you enjoy listening to What's the Score, why not go and donate to our Patreon account today? That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. Search for What's the Score and donate today. You can get awesome t-shirts, before the show shout-outs, and so much more. Tell your friends about us. Hey, if you donate, we'd be happy to give you a shout-out and even have you come on the show and play a game or two with us as well. Hey everyone, this is Baxter Colburn, host of What's the Score, the sports news quiz. Want to take a moment to let all of you know that if you enjoy listening to What's the Score, you can find us on the sportsquotient.com. Go and check out the sportsquotient.com. Check out and see how you stack up against the rest of the sports world by taking one of their S quizzes. You can also check out the Fantasy Guru section. And for those of you stat geeks out there, oh, they've got plenty of things for you. Plus, check out all the other great content that they have on their podcast section, like this very show right here, What's the Score? Hey everyone, this is Baxter. Just want to take a minute to thank one of our sponsors of What's the Score? Sports Radio America. Go and check out sportsradioamerica.com today and find all the greatest shows that you and your friends should be listening to if you're not already. Listen to the College Credit Hour, Sunday Gridiron, Major League Diamond, Two Up Front, and What's the Score? You can find What's the Score on sportsradioamerica.com and on the TuneIn app by listening to them on Mondays and Wednesdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Sports Radio America, one of the official sponsors of What's the Score? Welcome back to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, presented by Sports Radio America, and thanks for listening in. We're broadcasting live from the VLC studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe. We're playing this week with Dan Pfeiffer, Peter Wilt, and Daniel Schottler. And here once again is your host of What's the Score, Baxter Colburn! Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. As we continue on with our show, we want to remind all of you that you can find the show on demand on Spreaker, iTunes, and on Stitcher. And you can catch it on Sports Radio America on Mondays and Wednesdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time on SportsRadioAmerica.com and the TuneIn app. It's time now for our last slate of questions for our panelists this week. Dan, the first question's for you. 
64 teams had the chance to fight for a shot at making the Final Four this season. However, South Carolina had April Fool's Day come a little early because of what's happening to them. Well, first off, 68 teams if you talk to the NCAA. Secondly, uh, there was a... <laughs> hey, the first four are still the first four. So there was an incident where the NCAA actually sent them a message saying, Hey, you're in the tournament! Guess what? They weren't in the tournament. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> they were wrongly told they made the tournament. Ten minutes after that first phone call was made, the team was told that there had been a mistake... They ended up being relegated to the NIT tournament, and they lost in a blowout in the second round. I'll tell you what, I wonder if that text was intended for the folks at Southern California, USC, Ooh, USC. That's what I wonder. Easy that's, mistake that's what to I make. first thought about, and I kind of think that the games, the way they went last night, too, the losing teams might have wanted that text as well with how badly they lost. Yeah. Anyway, not to rub salt in the wound. Daniel, question for you. The Florida Panthers hockey team had a game delay twice this last week after fans would not stop throwing what promotional item onto the ice? Can I get a quick hint? Yes, you can have a hint. Usually there's a, these are the plastic version of this. They weren't the real thing, but uh, usually you find these in sewers, and you're not thrilled to see them at all. Rats? Yes, that is correct. 10,000 plastic rats were thrown onto the ice. And cost the Florida Panthers two game delays during funny, the game. Funny thing, I have a, a plastic rat at my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> was it part of the game? Where you did you throw it at the game? No, I'm, no. I'm <laughs> Josh, I got when I was seem, little. So. <laughs> you seem like you were well, taken aback by that. Why ten thousand plastic rats were given out as a promotion? Was it a item? bad promotional night? I think. It's I like, guess. I don't understand because they I just mean, had they just had Kevin they, Spacey. I mean, night, I could understand they? like a were plastic playing, like, rat crap? bobblehead, but something. Were they I don't. playing like crap like? <laughs> legit. I'm, I'm just thinking about the fact that Madison Square Garden is above the New York City subway, which means that they could probably have a real <laughs> version <laughs> if they wanted. <laughs> well, Peter, the last questions for you. Opening day for Major League Baseball has come and gone, and while most teams look ready to roll, the Milwaukee Brewers will be without pitcher Will Smith after he injured himself doing what? It was off field. I know that. I believe it was in the locker room where he was just stretching or taking off his shoe or something like that. Can I have a, a hint, Baxter? Yeah, your hint is that you've already said the answer, so I'll let you figure out which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got a 50-50 chance. I'll go with stretching. Or taking off his yes, shoe. Yes, yes, there you go. That is correct. <laughs> Stretching while taking off yeah, his shoe. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, uh, he will miss, quote-unquote, significant time to start off the season after tearing the lateral collateral ligament in his right knee in a freak accident. We've heard, I think it was Jonathan Lucroy did that sometime recently. Suitcase and, uh, accident in 2011. Suitcase accident. Somebody got, uh, one of the guys just tripped down the stairs a couple weeks ago. Too. Oh, no, that was O.J. Mayo that tripped down. So it just must be Milwaukee sports teams. Well, the lesson just, is never take your shoes off. Exactly. Or Why are you doing that, like, going in the shot? Can't you, like, sit down first and take think. off your shoes? Or maybe then? they need the Nike shoes that tie themselves and untie themselves. Hey. Uh, yes. Major At least he get did not that. get injured getting jiggy with it. No, 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 no. All right, Is that anyway. Is that a Frankowski joke? <laughs> <laughs> it probably could have been. He wasn't twerking, though, thankfully. Well, folks, it's time for me to break up the fun once again. But when we come back, our final contestant will be doing a bit of line dancing. We'll show you what we mean in just a little bit, so don't go away. This is What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, presented by Sports Radio America, broadcasting live on Spreaker.com. Hey everyone, this is Baxter. Just want to take a minute to thank one of our sponsors of What's the Score, Sports Radio America. Go and check out sportsradioamerica.com today and find all the greatest shows that you and your friends should be listening to if you're not already. Listen to the College Credit Hour, Sunday Gridiron, Major League Diamond, Two Up Front, and What's the Score. You can find What's the Score on sportsradioamerica.com and on the TuneIn app by listening to them on Mondays and Wednesdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Sports Radio America, one of the official sponsors of What's the Score? Hey everyone, this is Baxter Colburn, host of What's the Score, the sports news quiz. And I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe. If you think you are smart enough, or smarter than a fifth grader, and want to play our games on air, you can either come by the studio or you can call us, but there's a few different ways you can get a hold of us. If you'd like to email us, you can do so at WTSSportsQuiz at gmail.com. Or for you social media savants, head over to Facebook, What's the Score, the sports news quiz, or Twitter, WTS Sports Quiz. Now back to the action with myself and Josh Scheibe. Welcome back, everyone. This is What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Josh Shabby, your game master. Our Name 5 panelist showdown is coming up, but first we have a new game called Line, Please. Here to get the new game going is your host at the BLC Studios here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's Baxter Colburn. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. We've had a fantastic show so far. We've had some laughs, some plastic rats, and who knows what else is yet to uh, ensue. All right, we have a new game, as Game Master Shabby mentioned. Absolutely. Time now to welcome in our next contestant. Playing our final game is Charles Snyder. Welcome to the show, Charles. Hello. All right, Charles, you're going to be playing our final game, but in the game we just played before this, we talked a lot about the plots of famous sports movies. Well, now this time we are going to be taking a closer look at some of those iconic lines that have made those movies so iconic and memorable. Game Master Shabby and I will read you seven lines from famous sports movies. You will get one point for if you can tell us the name of each movie, and you'll get an extra bonus point if you can tell us also the name of the character that said that line as well. Earn at least seven points, and you'll win our prize, a What's the Score t-shirt. Remember, you can ask one panelist for help on only one question, so make sure to choose wisely. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. All right, here is your first quote. Chicks dig scars, pain lasts forever, glory lasts forever. Uh, I don't know that one. Would you, you, can, you can ask for a hint if you'd like to from one of our panelists. Uh, if you want I'll to use it so early, or you can take the zero and keep going. Yeah, I'm going to have to use it early because I have no idea. Now. Okay. Who would you like to... Would, would you like to ask Dan, Daniel, or Peter? Oh, you said you're taking the oh, you're taking the zero. I'm sorry, you said right. Hmm? Peter, he asked you for a hint. We'll go to you, sir. <laughs> Ooh, this is a film. <laughs> I believe that starred Keanu Reeves and Gene Hackman. That is correct. Oh, it's a football one. I can't remember the name of it. Do you know the name of the of who Keanu played in the movie? No, I don't. I know what movie it is. I can't think of the name of it. All right, well, we're going to have to move on. It was I've seen it, but I don't know it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was uh, Shane Falco said the line, and the movie was The Replacements. With oh, that's right. Yeah. All right, no problem. All right, so let's move on to your next one. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Uh, Rudy? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not Rudy. Nope. It was... Uh, that was Sanka from Cool Runnings, the uh, Jamaican bobsled team that went to the Winter Olympics. And, uh, I think they got oh, a man, I'm, I'm struggling in this game. That's all right. You still got some time. All right, here is the next one. Uh, just to mention, by the way, there will be a second movie coming out now about the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary because really? Eddie the Eagle is oh, also going to have a movie made about that him. That is right. That was the same Olympics as the, as the Jamaican bobsled what team. What an iconic Olympics. I love it. All right, here is your next one. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Well, that's dodgeball. That is correct. Story. Do you do, <laughs> do you know who said it by any chance for an extra point? I don't know his name. Okay. The guy in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to him. That's fine. Yeah, it was it was Patches O'Hulahan said it. That's Patches O'Hulahan said it. Yeah. All right. So you get two points out of that. All right. Here we go. Here's your next one. If you are not first, you're last. Maybe you should say that in a second. Uh, that's uh, Talladega Nights. That is. Yes. Do you know who said that line? Ricky Bobby? Yes, that is correct. All right. Ricky Booby. All right, uh, here's your next one. Mama says alligators are ornery because they got all of them teeth and no toothbrush. Uh, that's the water boy. That is correct. And do you know who said it? 
Oh, uh, Adam Sandler. I don't remember his name though. That's close enough. That's fine. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> Bobby Boucher or Boucher? 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 Anybody know? Boucher, Bobby Boucher. 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 That's what I thought. Bobby Boucher. All right, here is your next one. You play like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, um, I don't know. I don't know that one. Ooh, any any guesses at all? Nothing. Nothing. Rudy. <laughs> Rudy's the default answer. No, that is incorrect. It, that was. Uh, you gotta be kidding me, Smalls. That was Ham Porter from the Sandlot. It was the emphasis. Oh, okay, yeah, so he emphasized right. with which Ham said it. He's you play ball like a girl. It, it was I'm like so, a dagger. I'm sorry, Fifey. Ah. Wow. <laughs> All right, so you are one point away, Charles. Let's see if we can make you a winner this week. Here's your last clue. Just a bit outside. Jerry Maguire. Say that again. Jerry Maguire. Uh, no. I mean, do you have a, do you have uh, a, you have you have a chance though, to tell us? Um, I know you probably don't know the actor. But you might know the actor's name because he's from Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Very iconic. Could you repeat? I'm having some trouble hearing you. Could you repeat that one more time? Yep. The quote itself was just a bit outside. All right. Is the actor Tom Hanks? I'm not sure. Ah, uh, no, no, it was not. That was uh, the actor himself was Bob Euchre. He played Harry Doyle in Major League. Oh, yeah, oh. I have no idea. I've never seen that one. That's all right, Game Master Shyby. How did Charles do on our game? Charles got six correct. Unfortunately, he's not a winner in oh, today's game. Oh, Charles, we oh, appreciate you playing. Thank you so much, though, sir. Well, the moment you've all been waiting for is almost here. Stick around and listen to our panelists duke it out in the Name 5 Panelist Showdown coming up right after the break. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz presented by Sports Radio America live on Spreaker.com. I'm Josh Scheibe, your Game Master here at What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. Thanks for listening in. I may not know much about sports, but what I do know about are our social media pages. Check us out on Facebook at What's the Score or Twitter and Instagram at, at WTS Sports Quiz. Thanks very much for listening. Hey everyone, this is Baxter. Do you enjoy taking a sports news quiz? Well, I understand, of course, you like What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, but we encourage you to go check out one of our other sponsors, thesportsquotient.com. Go and check out the Sports Quotient and play one of their S quizzes. You can test your sports knowledge about anything you're doing with sports and even check out the great articles and content they have on their website as well. thesportsquotient.com. That's quotient with a Q. sportsquotient.com and check out what's the score on their network of podcasts as well. Hi, everyone. I'm your Game Master, Josh Scheibe. And I'm your host, Baxter Colburn. Hey, if you think the show is worth at least a dollar, why don't you go to our Patreon account? We'd be very grateful if you donate to the show. That's how people like Josh and I stay employed, or pretend to be employed, at least. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. And now, back to more sports trivia action. I hope my check's in the mail. Hello and welcome back. Thanks for listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe. Our panelists have been warming up for their final showdown. You might even say that Peter's been getting fired up. I will not apologize for that pun either. While they scramble to return to their seats, here's your host of the BLC Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Baxter Colburn. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, everybody. 
Time now for our Name 5 Panelist Showdown. Our panelists will be given four topics in which they will have ten seconds to name five people, teams, places, or things related to the sports world. Each panelist will have the same category. However, they cannot repeat answers. One point is awarded for each correct answer. Game Master Shibe, can you give us the scores, please? I can. Daniel has two points, Peter has three, and Dan also has three. Ooh, interesting. Going down first. I'm still in this. You still have a chance. All right, (laughs) so Daniel will be leading us off. With ten seconds on the clock, you need to name five. Daniel. Daniels, yes. Daniel. We will go Daniel, Peter, Dan on this round. So, Daniel, you'll be naming five MLB teams with an animal mascot. Ten seconds on the clock and begin. Cubs, Cardinals, um, Diamondbacks. Technically, yeah, that's true. Technically. It's a snake, yeah. Um. Time is up. You got three. All right. Mr. Wilt, you are up next, sir. Are you ready? Ten seconds on the clock and begin. Tigers. You got one. A <laughs> couple more seconds. Yeah, Anything you want to say to the, the folks Lions back home? Yet, not yet. No, no. no. Uh, the Bears are not in nope. MLB. Ooh, Bad time is Bears up. Get into the major Little league. league yeah. No. All right. So four have been said. All right, Dan, are you ready? We'll give it a shot. All right, and begin. Blue Jays, Marlins. Have the Cardinals been said? Yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Devil Rays don't count anymore. Uh, the Braves aren't anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Well, he got two. All right. All right. Nicely done. Moving on to our second round. We will be starting with you, Mr. Peter Wilt. You'll be naming five current male or female pro golfers. Ten seconds and begin. Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Michelle Wee, um, Jason uh, Day, mm-hmm. and... Um, Ooh, all right, Stricker. he got four. He got four. Save that yeah. last one. All right, Mr. Pfeiffer, you're up, sir. Ten seconds and begin. Uh, Rory McIlroy, Jesper Parnovic, Noda Begay. Can I go to the senior tour? Sure. Jack <laughs> Nicholas and Lee Trevino. Good Lord. Yeah, you got all five. Nicely done. Jack Nicholas is still playing. Lee Trevino is still playing. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Let me put it this way. If they're playing, they're playing. Uh, recreationally. Ah. Uh, they are still alive. I got one. So okay. they're still out there. They All right, here play. we go. Ten seconds on the clock for you, Daniel, and begin. Steve Stricker. Um, some guy named Bubba. Do you know his last name? Think of the IBM machine. <laughs> or Sherlock Holmes' partner. Watson. So Bubba. <laughs> there you go. Well, I mean, yeah, we'll give it to him. That's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whew. A little warm in the studio today. <laughs> anyway. I, had, I had to name the Wisconsin guy. Oh, we appreciate that. There All right. Go. Here is our next category, starting with Mr. Pfeiffer this time. You're going to be naming five current Major League Soccer teams and begin. Chicago Fire, Ooh. Seattle Sounders, um, FC Dallas, Houston Dynamo, New York Red Bulls. There you go. He got all five. Nicely done. Boom, bam, boom. All right. Um... Daniel's next, right? I think. Yes, I believe. Okay. Daniel, you are up next and begin. Um, New England. FC. I no. guess. No. Oh. No. Ah, man, I don't watch soccer that much. Uh. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if that's the right statement to make between the 10-year <laughs> public address announcer of Marquette <laughs> Soccer and Mr. Peter Will, too. I could, oh, no. I could run well. through your resume, Peter, but... <laughs> Can I ask for a lifeline and call Ryan Kwame really quick? (laughs) Soccer's not really my thing. Ooh, okay. All right, Mr. Welch, are you ready? I am ready. All right, and begin. Vancouver Whitecaps, Philadelphia Union, Colorado Rapids, D.C. United, and San Jose Earthquakes. That is correct. You got all five. Nicely done. Uh, All right. Game Master Shibe, what is our scores going into the final round? Daniel has seven points, Peter has 13, and Dan is in the lead with 15. Ooh, interesting. All right, well, Daniel, you will go first because you have a chance to maybe spoil some possible answers for these other guys. You're going to be naming five pro teams in any sport that have yellow in their logo. Yellow. All right. Ten seconds and begin. Green Bay Packers. Yellow and gold count, by the way. Um, Milwaukee Brewers has some yellow. Um... Uh, don't say. Ooh. No, he only got those two. The last one did not count. All right. Uh, so Peter is next. Am I correct at that one? He's behind. All right, Peter. 
you need two to tie yes. and as many more as you can to, to try to, to stop the great Fifini. Are you ready? No. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and begin. Uh, Columbus Crew, um, Golden State Warriors, L.A. Kings, if you count their retro jersey. Sure. And um, Chicago Sting. No? Okay, he only got three on that one. All right, so Game Master Shabby, what does Dan Pfeiffer need to win? Dan needs one point to tie and two to win. Okay. You have all ten seconds, so you can... Good luck, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> on your mark, Dan. Get set, go. The Brewers have gold in their logo, and they use some of it in their retro. Dan already said the Brewers. Oh, uh, LA Galaxy. Yes. The Kansas City Royals use some gold. Yes. Uh, the Minnesota Twins have gold True. in their logo, and I think we're good. He got three. Nicely done. Game Master Shivey, who is our winner this week? That'll be Dan Pfeiffer with 18 points. Hey, congratulations, congratulations. So we got to ask now, as we do at the end of every show, Peter Wilt, sir, how did you like your first time on the panel? Well, I'm very competitive, so I feel more abundant upon losing. <laughs> I, I had a chance. It was there. And, uh, but it was fun. Thanks you, very much. For you missed it like a, a sitter for Chris Wondolowski at the Olympic mm-hmm. or not the, the World Cup. Dan, yo, how do you think? I think I, think I could have done a little bit better job. I mean, if you could, would have given me like Brett Favre's backup quarterbacks in Green <laughs> Bay, I could Ooh, probably name probably, sixteen uh, or seventeen of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. Pfeiffer, you continue your your nice streak here. How do you how do you feel? Uh, third time on top, uh, but, uh, you know, it's kind of funny sitting here today. Uh, I, I don't want to seem like I'm gushing too much about my fellow panelists here, but I might be able to win at this show, but uh, I think both of these guys are winning at life, particularly, no, no offense, Mr. Daniel, but uh, Peter, with all he's done for uh, the Sting, the Fire, the Indy 11, and all of that, uh, you know, as a soccer fan, I might have won this battle, but uh, <laughs> uh, we all win the war a little bit better when we have folks that believe in soccer, as uh, Peter does, so there you go. Amen to that one. All right, well, congratulations, everybody. What's the Score has been a production of Sports Radio America. Thank you to all of our contestants and studio audience here at the BLC Studios. Our panelists this week have been Peter Wilt, Daniel Schottler, and Dan Pfeiffer. Our social media staff is comprised of Emily Reister, Brittany Peterson, Christian Gill. Our theme was composed by Danny Hoffenstein. Our media producer is Eric Condia. Our sound engineer and show producer is Kurt Colburn. And the executive director of What's the Score is Liz Colburn. I've been your game master, Josh Scheibe. And I've been your host, Baxter Colburn. Don't forget to check out our website, wtssportsquiz.wix.com slash quiz. And catch our next show on April 17th live right here on Spreaker.com. Thanks so much for listening, and we will see you all again next time on What's the Score.